hey guys welcome back to our youtube channel it's your girl fanny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget um to subscribe like i said welcome my name is fanny if there's really anything that you guys want us to react to drop the link down below and we'll be more than glad to react to it you can find us on facebook and instagram as fanny and jesse you can find our second youtube channel called fanny and jesse 2.0 head there like our stuff subscribe let us know what content you want to see and we'll be glad to look into it um today i'm going to be reacting to this one verse mentions six life changing things so without wasting time let's get into the video so allah almighty has given us beautiful instructions in this revelation there is a verse that's repeated a lot that we should be speaking about often. And when we reconnect with this particular verse, we will realize it encompasses almost the whole of our lives. What is this verse? It is verse number 90 of Surah An nahl where Allah speaks about himself. And as a result, he wants us to learn these qualities. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli. It is an instruction. So he's talking about himself. What does he instruct? Allah instructs the following. So Allah is speaking about what his instruction is. Now here are qualities he wants us to learn from. He wants us to obey because he is saying, this is my instruction. The first thing he says, Al-Adl. Allah instructs justice. Allah instructs that you are just. Justice at the beginning with your maker would ensure that you worship him alone. No one besides he who made you deserves to be worshipped. That is the highest form of justice is to offer worship where it is belonged only, nowhere else. But by extension, justice refers to everything else to do with what is right and wrong, what is fair and balanced, a judging between people in a matter you need to be fair, you need to fear the Almighty and you need to be unbiased. So Allah instructs you to be just. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. He instructs you to be kind, to be good, to be kind. So that's the second in the order. You are just and then you are taught to be kind. Wa ita'i dil qurba. And he wants you to give to your relatives who are in need. Ita'i dil qurba doesn't mention the need. It just mentions giving the relatives. But what's understood is, yes, exchanging gifts may be one thing, but more importantly, when people related to you are in need and you have a little bit excess from what you need, Allah expects you to reach out to them and give. Don't be miserly. Why? Because Allah gave you what you have in the first place. He wants to see, do you give others in need? And Allah Almighty thereafter says, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي Allah Almighty prohibits. He has warned us through a prohibition of three things. That doesn't mean that there are only three things in the list of prohibitions by Allah, but in this particular verse, there are three things being mentioned. Allah prohibits immorality, anything immoral. We shouldn't be looking at others with an eye of belittlement, thinking that these people will never come to the right path. Perhaps their struggles, who knows? Allah knows them. And this is why Allah says, Yanha anil fahsha. Allah prohibits immorality of all sorts. That would include adultery, it would include pornography, it would include nudity, it would include so many other things based on the Islamic understanding. So if a person is on a very high level of morality, he will definitely or she will definitely achieve a sense of comfort, a sense of fulfillment, a nur or a light that comes from their face because Allah promises you that and they would achieve the happiness, the contentment that comes with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every goodness. So Allah says, Yanha anil fahsha wal munkar. Allah prohibits you from evil, munkar, that which is evil, sinful. 
And al-baghi refers to crossing the limits, crossing the boundaries. Allah doesn't want you to cross the limits. He has set a boundary. Don't cross that. You know, it's called transgression. Do not transgress. Don't go beyond what Allah has ordained. So if you are going to protect yourself from immorality, evil, and transgression, you have succeeded. That's Allah. Allah has promised you and guaranteed you that you save yourself from immorality, evil, and transgression. MashaAllah. So reconnecting with revelation would ensure that you engage in good things and stay away from bad things. And you recognize what's good and bad. Someone might say, for example, what's a big deal about how I dress? Well, if you're a believer, there is a big deal. If you believe and you actually take the word of Allah as important, then surely it's a big deal. If Allah told you, don't do this, how could you claim to be a believer and ignore that? That's why Allah says, مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah says, a believer, a person who believes, male or female, it is not befitting for them to call themselves believers and then claim that I have a choice regarding what the Almighty wants and doesn't want and has instructed and hasn't instructed and the messenger has instructed and not instructed. What was the claim of belief for in the first place? And remember, we believe that revelation was sent in order for us to be able to lead the best life in terms of quality with the challenges and the hardships and the tests that are going to come in our direction, the Almighty will continue to keep us afloat and keep us happy and content and smiling all the time. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, no matter what difficulty and hardship he went through, he always thanked Allah. It could have been worse. He was always grateful to the Almighty and he never complained to the Almighty about the hardship that he was in. So we ask Allah Almighty to grant us from his goodness and Allah Almighty definitely says that those who believe male and female and those who do good deeds male and female, Allah will grant them a good life. فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً A good life. And in the hereafter, paradise awaits them. May Allah grant us goodness in this world and the next. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. I love the video. Love. I I love multi-mix um videos. Um. I write down the qualities, some of them, and uh, it's like. What I'm picking up from this is like God speaking directly to you, to me, or whoever is reading that verse here, yeah, reminding you that um, to live this type of way that I want you to live, that's God saying, you must obey these things. You must be just in things that you do. The people that are, that are not just in this world, you know, um, they're not just to themselves. They're not just to those around them. They're just not just at all. Um, you have to be fair in the way you judge certain things or the way you do certain things. I can't say it's okay for me to to eat this, but it's not okay for you to eat this. Do you understand? That's not being just. Find the common ground to make sure that everyone around you or you yourself are comfortable with whatever it is that you're dealing with. And there's uh, immorality. I mean, there's I mean, we know one or two things or many things that are immoral. It's up to you. Do you want to live that life? Do you want to spend the rest of li of your life doing immoral things? Or do you want to spend um, a life living, doing just moral stuff, you know? You don't have to... Uh, there's many different examples I could give for this, but I just don't want to pick on anything. Like, for example, let me just use stealing. Do you want to spend the rest of your life just stealing to live without guilt? Or you can just follow God's um, qualities of life and just obey that. Uh, sustain, 
or refrain from stealing or doing something immoral. Always be kind. People don't understand this. Always be kind. There's that saying, always be kind because you don't know what someone is going through or what kind of day they've had. Just be kind to people. It doesn't cost much to be kind. And if you have nothing kind to say or do, then just don't say anything, you know. Just don't involve yourself if you're not going to be kind about the situation. And then there was also mention of evil and sinful. Um, I think that one can relate to what there's something that I explained. Just don't be evil in this world. There's things that we actually do and we know these are evil or this is a sinful act. But we still go on or we can obey what God wants us to obey and live a better life. At the end of the day, I think God wants us to live uh, a better life than, what can I say? A better life than we would imagine. What others are going to say, ah, too, my, too many rules. Others are going to say, you know what, fine, this is a rule set in place for my own uh, benefit, not anyone else. And lastly, I would love to talk about being thankful always, always, always when you wake up, when you're going to sleep, whatever you're doing, when you're having lunch. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Remember to be grateful in life. Even if you're not telling that one person that helped you, thank you, say it inside. Even if you're not shouting it on top of your voice say thank you to god you know just be thankful if everything around you everything that you have and everything that you're going to receive someday otherwise let me know what you guys think about this video make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video